Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder, and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Disclaimer, this recording is not intended to be utilized as medical advice or a medical diagnosis. If you think you're in need of medical attention or treatment, please seek it immediately. This recording will also contain sensitive subjects such as binging and purging, weight and depression. Please listen at your own discretion and do what you think is best for you. Hello podcast listeners, I want to talk about having reasons that aren't shame-based to recover from bulimia. And the reason that I'm saying that is I was on the phone with a client who was discussing she had had a rough week and she has previously been doing well with not binging and purging, but this week there were multiple episodes and we talked about why those episodes happen. And part of when she was saying she was trying to fight those episodes, she was like, well, I was trying to make sure I showed up for myself and I hate when I do it because I feel so guilty afterwards and I feel so bad afterwards. And to me, what was interesting is I told her, it kind of sounds like you're guilt tripping yourself into not doing the activity, but there there isn't much reason behind it. And I'm going to use a religious comparison, but for those of you guys that are religious, I'm in no way saying that religion is all this way. But, you know, from my perspective, growing up uh, in a Christian household, sometimes some of the things at church, the reasons for not doing things seem like it was just because God said so. Now, of course, I think religion can be a beautiful thing that helps people with morals and, and, and guiding their lives and finding fulfillment. So no shade to you if you practice any religion. But to me, what aggravated me most is, you know, some of the rules in the Bible felt like just do it because that's what you're supposed to do. And it didn't feel like a valid reason. It just felt like if you do this, you should be ashamed and you're going to hell and you should be burdened. So I didn't like that. And it never seemed very motivating to me in exact, maybe you want to do the exact opposite of whatever the rules were. I think this is very true when it comes to yourself. If you're telling yourself, don't binge and purge because it's bad. Well, what does that even do? What does that even mean? Ethics, morals, they are subjective, unfortunately. I think that the most people naturally find certain things wrong. Inherently, you get a gut reaction of that's wrong. When you see an animal being hurt or someone being tortured unnecessarily, you see someone in pain, someone being cruel to someone else, you usually get that icky feeling in your body, that that gut-wrenching feeling that tells you that's wrong. But those are all subjective perceptions of reality, and binging is also one of those things. Binging is just eating a bunch of food. Purging is just getting rid of it. And it's not right or wrong. It has its consequences and its benefits. But you ultimately have to decide what those things are. And I think this client, what she was doing is she was trying to guilt trip herself into not doing it rather than having valid reasons for not doing it. And so we discussed it. And one of the primary things that she uh, came up with was that it takes time away from what I truly love and makes things that I truly love feel less powerful, less potent, less enjoyable, which is so interesting to think about. It, it, what binging does, binging and purging and many other drugs, is it raises your baseline of pleasure, makes your high even greater, and therefore you're always trying to get back to that high. And I remember this too, is that when I was going through bulimia, it felt like I just didn't really enjoy much else. Everything else felt annoying in comparison or dull or blah. It just felt like I was walking through a world of gray and food was really the only highlight of my day or chewing gum or something. I don't know, something silly like that. Uh, It really took away from my life. I've said this before, but you can't numb the bad without numbing the good. And I think when you're using bulimia, it just kind of numbs everything. It's like, it's, it's just a total body. What is antiseptic? That's not the right term for it. A whole body numbing agent. I can't think of the word. Oh, that's so, that's so annoying. Whatever. We'll move on from it. Uh, you know what I'm talking about though. Oh, local anesthesia. I think that's what I'm talking about. Mm, no, I don't, that's, I don't think that's right either. But anyway, it's really hard to numb the bad without numbing the good as well. Binging and purging is like in taking a blunt swipe. For me, when I stopped binging and purging too, while I truly didn't want to, I had gotten over the fact that it was bad or good. I really didn't label it as that anymore. I just thought of it as smoking my cigarettes. It's whatever. It's something that I do. It's not ethically wrong. We're not going to go and tell the world about it, but we're cool with it. Whatever. Fine. But 
taking away the drama and the shame and the guilt from me then made me more present when I was actually binging and I realized it wasn't that good it wasn't super enjoyable to eat food in a rapid manner and food that I didn't really like just food that I could find on sale that was cheap and and bad for me sale bought pastries that were that were going bad soon or something like that and junk food that wasn't really that great and even if the food was great, I would eat it with a threat of purging, meaning I had to eat it quickly and I had to eat it in a manner that knowing I was going to have to purge later, I had to eat it in specific order sometimes, all these stupid rules that I had. And it was very stressful just eating that rapidly and quickly. I would oftentimes get Raynaud's attacks from the stress of it. My fingers would be white sometimes when I was binging because it was just such a stressful activity. It wasn't pleasurable and I wasn't really tasting the food. And the more and more I got present to that, the more I was like, I don't like this. This is stupid. This isn't fun this isn't something I want in my life I could be doing other better things and it was from there that the pausing and stopping binging became a lot easier because I really truly felt like even though there's a part of me that still wants it there's a part of me that definitely doesn't want to anymore and then it got so much easier to say no but when you truly feel like no I want to binge and I have to binge but I shouldn't it's wrong it's bad it's bad for my health those reasons aren't going to be motivating to you long term so you almost have to get really real with yourself as to what is this doing for you? What is it not doing for you? Maybe write a pros and cons list as rudimentary as that sounds and figure out what it is to you and why you want to keep it, why you want to leave it. It just helps. Using shame tactics generally doesn't work well, especially if it's just with yourself because then you all you're going to do is push yourself, push yourself, finally do it and make all the justifications that you can and then afterwards feel guilty and start this whole spiral again, which will probably lead you to more behaviors over time rather than just owning it and be present with it. Also, I want to talk about, this is kind of a twofold podcast episode, but it came up on our group coaching call this Sunday and I want to discuss it here with you guys, which is we're not cartoon characters. So you might say like, Jacqueline, but I want to and I don't want to at the same time. Then it comes down to you ultimately deciding what you want to go with. We have to moderate ourselves in so many different ways. I want to go on a big shopping spree and spend a whole bunch of money on clothes, but I don't do that because I know it would be financially irresponsible for me. And even though those clothes would feel so good and I'd love all the cute new outfits I got and all those things, I don't do it because I know that looking at my bank account a month from now would screw me over and I wouldn't feel very good about myself and I'd be very stressed out and I don't want to do that. So, and I don't feel like I'm restricting myself or feeling bad about that. I just know that it just wouldn't end up the pros of getting new clothing, like a bunch of new clothes right now, going on a hardcore shopping spree would not outweigh the cons that I'd feel later on. So I can feel good about saying no to myself in that decision. But a lot of times we treat ourselves as if we should be, I don't know, we should either want something or not want something. But binging is a complicated, almost addiction type based uh, condition that you're going through. You can want it and not want it at the same time. And you ultimately have to be the one that understands both the reasons that you want it and don't want it and move forward. This client I talked to today about the why she's not binging her reasons. We also talked quite a lot about the reasons why she's still doing it. And with enough honesty and kind of asking questions, we came to the realization that she's still heavily holding on to not wanting to gain any weight and not allowing certain foods because she's fearing they're going to create weight gain and then eventually giving into cravings because she knows that well if she purges it doesn't matter anyway so it makes this gateway for binging and purging so you need to get clear on what binging is really offering you is it offering you just pleasure or are there other reasons that you're doing it is it that you think it's the only way you can access food you have to figure it out for yourself or talk with it talk about it with a therapist or a coach or someone that has been there but be really real with yourself. Talking about the reasons why you don't want to is just as important as talking about the reasons that you do want to because when you can be real about those reasons why you do want to, you can then understand yourself better. Another client, I feel like all my podcasts always like, this client was talking about this, but that, if you guys ever wonder where I get my content from, it's from all the client calls that I do and the people I work with. But this client was discussing she's come such a long way she worked with me for three months she had already stopped binging and purging but she was still having lots of food thoughts about food and body and some binging happening occasionally and so she wanted to work with me for a short period on just changing those things and we're coming up on our last two calls here and she said you know what's interesting is finding out about why i was doing these things has changed my life so much and really helped me understand 
how to address myself. When you understand why you're doing something, why you want to do something, it makes it so much easier to alter your behavior because you truly understand yourself. And she said something else, which was kind of interesting. She said, when I stopped binging, I had no idea what process I was beginning. Like stopping binging and purging is just the beginning. And what she meant by that is that when you stop binging and purging, you start unfolding this process of realizing who you truly are, what you truly want, what desires are buried underneath, what feelings are buried underneath, and how to actually really respond to yourself because when you take away the binging and purging you actually have to learn how to emotionally manage yourself right how to self-soothe in a different way how to alter your life in a different way you just have to change really and she said it's almost stupid to think a year ago when I was starting this process that I thought oh I just have to stop binging and purging it was so much bigger than that so anyway this podcast has been all over the place I just thought it would be important to talk about though is that you're not a cartoon character you are a multifaceted multi-desired being who have different wants and wants you can want something not want something at the same time however it's crucial that you understand why you want it and why you don't want it and you can't just shame yourself into not doing something you have to have practical reasons why you don't want to and they need to come from you they can't sound like they're copied and pasted pasted off the any the nita.org website or any other eating dissociation website or what your mom told you when you were 15 it has to be for you and for you alone and if you don't want to stop binging and purging you need to get clear on the reasons why and you need to be honest about those reasons every single time. I find sometimes when people don't want to change, what's far better for them isn't to keep pushing them, but to be real on why they don't want to and then let them go live their lives like that for a little while and see if they really truly want it. Because I find when you truly live the way you say that you want to and you actually like make a decision and you're like, no, we're going for it then you truly see, oh, this is what I wanted, or no, this is actually not what I want. This line of thinking is not working for for me anymore. I was wrong. And you won't truly know that until you're fully transparent and you try practicing it. So that's my podcast episode for you. It's short and sweet because this week I am going to the pause retreat. I talked about this in the private podcast too, but as you're listening to this, I am in Mexico right now at Ocho's Retreat Center with a few clients. Only a few clients are coming. It's really small, which is totally fine, but I think we're all going to have a good time. And I'm looking forward to this, this retreat center, this retreat experience for a few reasons. One, I think the people that are going, they're going to benefit greatly from this because it's going to be highly customized and tailored to them. And we're really going to focus on keeping food down and being safe with food and moving through the uncomfortable feelings that come up when they have food, right? And also truly identifying who they are without bulimia in their life and doing it in such a safe, peaceful way kind, loving environment and exposing themselves to different types of foods and those things. So that's going to be great. But then two, it's going to be so quiet. We're going to have a lot of journal and reflection time. We're going to have a lot of deep conversations. And I feel like while it's going to be transformative for my clients, I think it's going to help me too. There have been a lot of things going on in my life lately. This year has been such a transformative year. Like so many different things have happened, but things are kind of coming to a head again and like new trans new things have come to light that are forcing me to kind of make changes and i think that the space and time in a beautiful place like ocho's retreat center in san pacho mexico it's really going to help me be able to make those decisions with clarity and change my life and really identify who I want to be. I think that something i've been doing is i've been doing this for 3 years now and i'm coming to a point where i love what I do, but I think I need to make some changes to it as well and and pivot and try new things and kind of spread my wings a little bit into new territory. And I've been avoiding that and not sure, but I think this will help me make those decisions and fully, truly embrace that. And also there's nothing like being with clients in person. I've got the privilege to meet a few clients in person now and every single time it's taught me a lot as well. So anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. I was just asked on Instagram today if I'm taking new clients. I am taking on new clients. We won't be able to start till August. And I guess it's August when you're listening to this, but you know, the second week of August or the third week of August. But if you would like to work with me, book a consult now. We'll discuss whether or not we're a good fit. I'll answer any of your questions and I can also offer you a little bit of help on the call. And then if we're a good fit, we'll get started. We'll book dates to meet weekly and 
yeah, we'll start tackling bulimia together and binge eating together. So if you're interested in that, you can go there and um, some changes are coming to the bulimia breakup recovery program as well. I can't announce anything yet, but they are happening soon. So I hope you guys look forward to that. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and I hope you found this podcast helpful. Have a good day. Never give up on yourself.